and welcome to Junior Marine Biology Online. My name is Lawrence and I've been your host for the past 10 weeks as we've explored our oceans around us. Now last week we learned all about sharing your science. Let's have a look at some of the different science that you shared with people around you and with us. Thank you for sharing all of that science with us. Now, welcome to our 10th and final week of Junior Marine Biology Online. We have had an absolutely fantastic time exploring our oceans with you. Now, our oceans bring us so much joy, whether it's the sound of waves crashing on the shore or the daily sparkle that the sun gives us when its light dances on the surface of the water. It's a familiar, friendly place that many people call home but it can also be a bit of an alien place with strange and unusual creatures and behaviors. And things only get weirder as the sun goes down. So today we'll be exploring our oceans at night. We're filming tonight's episode outside at the beach at sunset because this is when the nighttime adventure begins. First, let's have a look at a place where it's always nighttime. As we dive deep down into the ocean, two things happen. The first is that the pressure increases, and the second is that the sunlight decreases. At about one kilometer deep, there is no more natural light. And it's in these deep, dark waters that we can find some of the most alien creatures on this planet, such as the ferocious dragonfish or anglerfish. But it's these animals that have some of the most amazing abilities on this earth. They can produce their own light. When living things produce their own light, it's called bioluminescence. And it's something that many organisms on this earth do, such as fireflies, glowworms, and even some types of fungi. There are many fish and marine animals that produce it as well from plankton to crabs, squid, fish, and even some sharks. They use it in a variety of ways, from attracting a mate to luring prey, or even distracting and escaping predators. It's something that has evolved many times by many different animals on this planet. And from marine fish alone, it's evolved independently 29 times. The process is essentially the mixing of two chemicals together to produce light. 
Some animals, like certain types of plankton, can produce bioluminescence by themselves, but some animals can't, and they have special organs where bioluminescent bacteria live. They live in a symbiotic relationship, similar to corals and their algal zooxanthellae partners that you learnt about in week 3 with Pip. It is estimated that 75% of deep sea animals use bioluminescence, but you don't have to dive deep down to be able to see it, you can see it at the surface of the water. When the special bioluminescent plankton get together in large groups and are disturbed by a wave or moving your hand through the water, they'll emit their light. You can see this here in the Maldives and even right here at Lamu. Next time you go for a swim at night time, turn off the lights, wait a few minutes for your eyes to adjust and have a look in the water, moving your hands and feet. You might be able to see those amazing sparkles of light. Fun fact time! Did you know that before I was a marine biologist, I was a molecular biologist? That meant that I studied really tiny things like cells, the proteins that made up the cells, and the DNA that coded those proteins that made up those cells. A common part of my toolbox when I was in the lab doing experiments was making certain cells or certain parts of those cells glow under special conditions. I used the same chemicals and proteins that animals use when they bioluminesce, and these ones came from fireflies and jellyfish. It's a tool that many scientists use all around the world, and it can help you find out if your experiment was successful or if it wasn't. Now that we know all about bioluminescence and the creatures that make it, let's have a go at making our own. Follow the instructions below to create your own nighttime creature lantern.